In a previous video, I showed you in clear and proper detail how to deploy a full-stack React application to AWS or Amazon's EC2 server. We managed to successfully deploy our chat application. We even managed to purchase a custom domain and point it to the server. Now deploying with the EC2 server is a good and proper way to deploy applications, but it's not the easiest. You have to skip through a couple of hoops before seeing your application live. And if you don't watch it, or if you don't do proper accounting, you might end up spending a lot in your deployment using the EC2 server. Now, a good alternative to AWS is Heroku. Heroku is a cloud as a service platform which supports multiple languages. Heroku is so much simpler and easier to use compared to other cloud as a service platform, including AWS. The Heroku platform provides a set of capabilities that deliver high order value. Uh, with Heroku, there's no need to learn about server configuration, network management, or tuning the latest version of a database. Heroku removes all these obstacles so that developers can focus on what they do best, which is creating great applications. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a simple full stack application to the Heroku platform. Before we carry on with our video, please subscribe to my channel. Of late, we've been going hard, creating videos which will for sure improve your developer experience. You don't want to miss out on what we have in store for you. So make sure that you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment below if you have any comment. Did you subscribe? Did you like the video? All right then, let's continue. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna be using that same application that we built, that same chat application. And I have to say, many of you have been going wild on the chat application in like chatting to yourselves or chatting to other people. And I'm glad to see that. So yeah, we're gonna be using this application. Um, if you're not familiar with this application, we did create a chat application in one of my previous videos. So make sure that you check that out. I'm gonna leave it in my cards so that you can like uh, check it out. So it's a simple chat application, which I created using React and Node.js as backend. So I will show you um, this video in my cards so that you can look at it if you're interested in that. So before we proceed or we go anywhere, the first thing that you need to do, of course, is to create a Heroku account. So you need to just go to id.heroku.com or you can just go to heroku.com and just sign up and just follow the sign up uh, information. It's pretty e easy to sign up. And then once you're done signing up to Heroku, just go to the Heroku um, website once again and install the Heroku CLI, especially for Windows users. Uh, it's very simple to do. So all you just need to do is to download the installer, the 64-bit or 32-bit installer into your computer. For Mac users, all you need to do is just this command over here, and then you'll be able to install your uh, application. So for other users, I'm going to leave this link below so that you can know. I mean, for other OS uh, or operating systems, I'm going to leave this link below so that you can see how you can install the Heroku command line interface into your computer, because this is very essential for what we're going to be doing next. So it's as easy as that. So that's all we need to do. Uh, now that we've uh, put the groundwork out of the way, let's continue with our video. I'm going to go to my application. And then once I've navigated to my application, I'm going to just open it up using VS Code. And so as you can see, this is the structure of our application. From the onset, we have two folders over here. We have client, and then we have the server right here. Now Heroku demands that we have a package.json file from on the root uh, section. So we're gonna have to make this entire thing a node application. And all we just need to do is just say npm init dash dash yes. All right, and there's our package.json over there. And what we need to do, of course, we, we just need to navigate to this app.js file and actually uh, start our MP. Oh, we need to just navigate to our app.js file and actually run it. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to say cd server and node app.js, just like that. And then on the client side, what you need to do, let me just show you on the package.json, you need to do this on your build section. Make sure that you include this line over here. You say on, on the build file, I mean, on the build section of your package.json, just say React scripts build and CD into the server and install all the dependencies. So this is the line that your Heroku uh, CLI is going to run. It's going to make sure that every dependencies is installed. And instead of saying start, you're going to say start client. This is what Heroku demands us to do. Instead of saying client, make sure that you just do start client. And the other thing that we need to do is that on our app.js, um, yeah, make sure you have this line from our previous video. Of course, this line is already in there. So this is the line that's going to run our static our React static files. So that's very important for you to have. But if you have been following our videos, then you're already familiar with this line of coding. And the other important thing that you need to do is that you don't run hard code your server. Make sure you say process.emv.port or 5001. So instead of having maybe 5001 here, this uh, your Heroku is going to complain. So you need to put port over here instead, even if you don't have a process or even if you don't have an ENV file, you actually need to declare this uh, port that you have over here. And then once you're done doing that, let's just check if everything, oh, we forgot to actually navigate inside of our where did we make that start file? I think we made the start file over here. That's not what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to make that start file over here. Silly me, I could have just copied and pasted that. But I'll just pause the video. And there we have it. All right. And then after this, I think we're ready for deployment now. Okay, so let's just recap on what we just did. We created an npm package.json over here so that we can just simply, it allows us to actually, it tells our Heroku CLI what file is to be run. So obviously we want to run this app.js file because it's the one that is going to be running our React static assets. So this is the file that is responsible for running our entire application. So when Heroku comes here, it needs to identify the package.json and it also needs to identify, it needs the route that tells us where to run our entire application. The other thing that we actually need to do is that we need, actually need to take every single dependency that we have inside of our inner package.json in our server, and we need to take those dependencies and we need to put them over here. So Heroku demands that all those applications, we put them over here. And then, yeah, I think that's it. We're ready for deployment now. We just simply go to our command line. And the first thing that you need to do is that after you've installed the Heroku CLI, you need to say Heroku login. And Heroku is going to direct you to your browser. It's going to say, press any character. And it's going to open up your browser. It's going to ask you to log in like that. And you can just simply, and you can just simply log in with your credentials. Okay, that's done. Go back to your compiler. And then that's it. Go back to your CLI. Now you can just simply say Heroku create and then you're going to name your file. I'm going to call it coding 101 chat application. Yeah, I'm going to just say chat app like that. I'm going to wait for it to create. And you can see then if the name is not available, it's going to give you an error. So make sure that you give it a very unique name. So you can see that I've given it. This is where our application is going to run. So our application is going to be uh, live on this URL that you see over here. And this is our Heroku JIT repository. Then after we're done doing that, we need to say JIT add normal procedure. And we say JIT commit. 
uh, Heroku commit and then our final uh, thing that we need to do we just need to say jet um, push Heroku master like this and what it's gonna do is it's gonna build our, our application and it's going to deliver it to the Heroku website and it doesn't take much it takes about like two minutes or even one minute for it to if it's a small application like ours and then we can just use this URL that you're seeing over here we can go to our browser just put this down a bit fingers crossed there you have it there's our application and we type in a random name coder and there is our chat all right and so it is as simple as that just make sure that you um, as you copy your dependent then sees everything is good because I noticed that one of the mistakes that I did is this dependency over here I didn't spell the word express properly and because of that I experienced an error so I guess I didn't need to actually install those dependencies so um, on the outside on the root directory so I just needed to spell express properly so yeah that's it about installing, I mean, sorry, that's it about deploying your application on Heroku. Yeah, it's as simple as that. It's not as difficult as or as complicated as the EC2 um, server, but it's very sufficient, it's very easy. This is the type of thing that you would need to do for your simple applications uh, if you don't want to do something too drastic. But EC2 is very comprehensible, it's very but EC2 is very comprehensive compared to uh, Heroku in terms of server configurations, uh, monitoring how your server is performing, all those types of things. So yeah, that's it for me for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. If you have subscribed, make sure that you click the notification bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my content. If you have any comments leave them below but other than that thank you so much for watching i will see you next time on coding 101